Oh, and we are here. We're live. We're in my room. Another podcast. Welcome, guys. This is episode seven. Do you get what I'm saying? Episode seven, guys. We made it. We made it all the way here, and I hope this mic is on, and I'm not just chatting gibberish. Um, but yeah, we made it. Welcome. Welcome all. Generation of creators in this platform this makes me feel are people good. who right now have less than yeah. a thousand subs. Um, that's where it starts. So, I'm Louise21, this is my podcast, episode 7, yes, I'm wearing a hood, I just felt like doing something different, because every, every podcast I kind of look the same, just different top, so I thought, why not wear a hood this time, it's completely random, and I got water, as you can see that straw, uh, because I always get a really croaky voice after a bit, and I'm looking in the uh, viewfinder, and I want to try and keep my posture straight, you know, because I always end up doing that by the end. And I just get a bit lazy. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm just vain. Just too vain. Um, if you're listening to this on iTunes or SoundCloud, thank you. Um, I appreciate that too. If you're watching this, yeah, um, it's a podcast. So visually, it's just me talking. Um, whether the camera's on or not, you know what I mean? It's just me talking about what's been going on recently. It's been crazy. Like it ne- It's never a dull moment in my house, in my life. In anyone's life, or maybe for some of you, but um, I just hope not. Hope 2019 is treat- treating you well. I can't even speak still. So yeah, um, I had a hospital visit. Um, but before I get into that, I want to talk about you know episode 7. And I have heard on other podcasts that past episode 7, you know, it's either make or break. Uh, normally by episode 7, you either failed the podcast, or you're doing well. Um, I'm doing well. I've not failed it. Uh, I don't know how you can fail just being yourself and talking. Um, But, you know, I mean, some podcasts don't quite make it. Whether I've made it or not, I'm not making money off this yet. Uh, That's not the idea. I'm doing it because I need to talk about what's going on in my life. And, yeah, I look weird with this hood. I look like a Star Wars character, don't I? Like some sort of Jedi. Some sort of uh, Jedi master. Not quite. (laughs) A young Padawan, more like. On my... Well, don't feel like that on YouTube. Anyway, enough Star Wars references. I mean, how many more can you have? Um, so, yeah, apart from looking like a Star Wars character, yeah, I had a hospital visit, two days overnight there. Usual, but it was just really annoying because of one particular doctor. But, like I said, I'm celebrating because it's episode 7. I don't want to start off with a negative thing, you know. Um, my brother was away for work. He came back yesterday. I hadn't seen him since Sunday when I went over... Sunday? No, it's like Saturday or something. When I went over to the hospital, spent quite a few days there. More than I should have. And, no, it's been an interesting week. It's been a week when an egg can get the most likes on Instagram. Um, You know, no one can beat that egg. Like, why? An egg on Instagram, come on. This is amazing. Um, There's been a lot going on with my, the people I watch on YouTube, you know. KSI, Joe Weller. They've been on each other's at each other's throats a bit. Well, KSI just hates Joe, basically. And a few reaction videos, and I'll do a video about that later on in the week. And I have uploaded a few videos this week, but being at the hospital early in the week just delayed everything. You know, time is money, come on. I want to make these videos, they're holding me back. Yeah, yeah, of course, doctors, they, they, they're there to help, you know. But sometimes they just, you know, all the degrees in the world, but etiquette, some of them just don't have. Manners, you know, you can't... There's no degree that will teach you manners. You either got them or you don't, you know. I mean, come on. Surely there's something about that when you learn, you know, all the qualifications. But then any doctor, like, that, you know, if something's not in their area of expertise, they're like, no, 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 that's not me. But you've got to consider that, you know. Like, it's just inconsiderate, basically. But other than that, at the hospital, I, I did escape, get to Leicester Square... Went to see, me and my dad went to see the Stan and Hardy movie. Lauren Hardy, probably the best duo, like, in history of, like, TV, comedy, you know. You've got Albert Costello, you've got people like Charlie Chaplin, well, Charlie Chaplin was on his own. But, you know, these type of guys, 
<laughs> Skills right there. So smooth. <laughs> um, yeah, these guys, they're like legends of comedy. And it's about their life story. And Steve Coogan plays one of the, plays Laurel, Stan Laurel. And John, is it O'Reilly or C? I don't know. John C. Ryder, John O'Reilly plays uh, Hardy, Oliver Hardy. And it's like their life story. And it's, it's really inspirational if you watch it. The stuff they go through is to like friends you know, on and off screen. It's not all good times, basically. Like, with any career, I guess. But in show business, you know. So we had great fun watching that. I went to the Odeon in Leicester Square. I've got another story to tell about the cinema. And even the cab we took to get there. There's, it was a, a whole week, weekend and a few days of, like, ups and downs. Like, really fun moments and really annoying moments. I'm not going to be... Ne- it's nothing sad, you know what I mean? It's just me getting fed up with some of these doctors. As, as, as uh, professional as they are. Or not in some cases. But yeah, I'm just amazed that I'm here, episode 7 of this podcast. How I ever started this podcast, I don't know. Well, I saw other people doing it and I thought, why not? The same when I actually did YouTube. That's how it started, you know. It was me wanting to see if I could do it like other people could. You know, you don't, you see other people, you don't copy them, you just get ideas here and there and you know. The level to compare yourself to. And I've been doing that. I mean I've been making. Quite a few vlogs this year so far. A few different reaction videos. But I'm, what, the one thing I'm doing different is really. If you've noticed I'm numbering all the, the vlog episodes. Because I want to keep track more. So we're starting fresh this year. Um, in the past I've done like se- season after season. So it'll be season 1, season 2, season 3. Of the vlog. But I don't bother with that. I'm just doing it year by year now. Literally. Episode 1, we started with me talking about the year it's been, and how far we've come, and the stress, and that's still carrying on, and I mean, it's not going to end, is it? Just because a new year starts, there's no, not, the stress ain't going to disappear, is it? But I'm loving this new mic, and I hope you appreciate um, the sound, because it's a lot better. I mean, I I certainly appreciate it when I hear it back, and this new webcam, of course. I haven't got my DSLR camera out for a long time, been switching between this and the GoPro. And it works, it works. Um, but recently I've been watching a lot of Joe Sugg vlogs. Thatcher Joe off Strictly. Uh, if you watch Strictly, you'll know who he is. Um, his uh, type of style of vlogging is, at the moment, it's like 20 minute vlogs. Literally what he's doing that day in more detail than I've probably ever done on a vlog. I keep it a bit more like private when I do it, I guess. No, it depends um, what I'm doing that day. I mean normal day editing videos and stuff or when I do go out I'm vlogging anyway when I'm at home like you know I've got to be more open with the rare vlog like more random can't be like nah this ain't good enough because you know that's not what a vlog's about it's about documenting your day in your life and I really want to do more of them more regularly but because thanks to the podcast most of the opinions and things I'm feeling on my mind I, I I say here, you know, on the podcast. So I'd just be repeating myself for the vlog, but it's a different kind of audience. Like some of you might not watch all these podcasts or listen to all these, but you might watch my vlogs or vice versa. So whatever it is, thank you. Um, I'm going to drink some water. Like right now. I'm going to reach this down bottle. Wait, let me move. Yeah, so... The reason why I'm drinking so much water is also because at the hospital, the amount of times they did my blood pressure. Let me stop pressing buttons. Anyway, the amount of times they did my blood pressure and it was just really low. Like, I mean, obviously, if you do it straight, uh, you know, straight away in the morning, like 7 a.m. when I've just woken up, of course it's going to be low because, like they said, like they've explained to me, your blood pressure is related to your activity like your movement you're moving around and the amount of water you drink now the bit about water i knew but not about well not so i didn't really know but um anyway they said that and they're the ones worrying when my blood pressure is low when i'm like well give me some water then and it'll be fine well they said they said drink some water you know 
and it did, and then it's up to 101, my blood pressure. So, but of course for me, my condition is, tends to be low anyway. Because how active am I, really? I'm, I'm not using my legs, am I? <laughs> uh, you know, half the activity of the body is just, inact- is, you know, half my body's inactive, so. Because I'm not using my legs, you know what I mean? So, I, I don't get why they're worrying. And they were, you know, they kept trying it, and they were bringing in the, the old-fashioned blood pressure thing. You know, like they put it around your arm and they squeeze the thing, and it gets tighter. It's the old-fashioned way, basically. And they were they were quite worried, but you know, I wasn't because I knew I knew that. Obviously, I've just woken up. I'm going to be dehydrated. You know, things like that. But it's probably better than having a high blood pressure. Um, <laughs> so my dad said anyway. You know, because his is always a bit higher. But it, it changes with with your age, I guess. No offense, Dad. You're still young. <laughs> oh dear. Um, we had we had a good time, other than the doctor annoying me. But so yeah, this is episode seven, guys, of the podcast, not the vlog. I'm gonna get mixed up, and I it's number seven, podcast number seven. So yeah, I've been at the hospital and doing that, and uh, since I've been back, I make made a video like trying to make a video every day. I uploaded one just before this, the previous vlog about the, this whole hospital trip. But you'll see in that vlog. Well, you'll see from the length of it that I didn't do that much vlogging anyway. And I wasn't really in the mood to because of, of how annoyed I was that day, probably. But going to see the film and getting out around Leicester Square always cheers me up, you know. Always love found a good street performer. Always Leicester Square I end up in. The amount of vlogs I'm in Leicester Square. You know, I mean, it's where we take all the all our relatives from Italy when they come. You know, we might take them there more than once and... You know, if they if they don't live here, they might not notice. Leicester Square, Covent Garden, you know. Like, oh yeah, have we been here before? No, you haven't. No. Oh, I remember the time. Yeah, no. So then living here, it's like Leicester Square. Oh, I'm here without any family members. Just me and my dad. We don't have to take anyone anywhere to the M and M shop or or you know to any particular part. We're just here. But how we got there, I'll explain. So this was the. Yeah, the same day I had the argument with the doctor, which I'll get into later. It was the same day, so we were, we were a bit fed up at the hospital with the tests in the morning. They said, in the afternoon, you're free. You just have to come back in the evening and go to sleep for the sleep study. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Sleep study it is. So yeah, we've gone out. we literally gone to the main road outside the, the hospital. I was going to say hotel. Really not. So Queen Square next, Queen Square, next to Great Ormond Street, basically. One of the roads around there. There's like a road where all the cabs go. So we hailed a cab. I can get in the black cab. Just about. And they've got quite good headroom. So because my chair's quite tall. That's normally a problem. But not in this case. So I just squeezed in. We got in. Um, talking, Got talking with the cab driver. Turns out he's a huge Lauren Hardy fan. Just like my dad. And obviously we get talking. We're talking about. My dad's like. Oh I used to watch you when I was a kid. In Italy I used to come home from school and watch it every day. And then the cab driver was like, yeah, I did the same here with my brothers and my siblings. And then we're talking about that, and I was talking about Italy. And he was like, oh, I want to go to Rome one day with my wife. And my dad was like, saying, oh, Rome's good, this and that. I haven't been for years, but anyway. So, you know, we're giving him all this advice and like, having a good bit of chat, really. Good banter. To, you know, black cab drivers love a good good chat. It's part of their job. Part of the job description, really. Part of the job, you know. So anyway, we get to, and then we got there. Like, literally opposite the Hippodrome, he's dropped us off. Leicester Square. Because that's where we were going for the film, right? So we got there, and my dad's like, how much do I use? He's like, no, 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 it's free, mate. No, uh, nothing. Just two quid for a tea, and I'll be fine. So we literally given him two quid, and he's fine. So, he, he, you know, he didn't want to charge us. From one Lauren Hardy fan to another, you know. That's what he said. <laughs> and I was, like, taken back by that. Uh, um... Respect to that cab cab driver. We we'll probably won't see him again. You know how many cab drivers there are, but what what a good guy. So that's good. So we get there. We're we're happy as hell because free cab ride basically, and it's just nice when you, you know, you meet someone and you relate to them about something in your life. So it was between my dad and the cab driver, but yeah, we had a good banter on the way there. So yeah, we've we've chosen to go to Cineworld to see the film in the end, and this Cineworld in Leicester Square. Basically, you go in, and there's, like, stairs to go up to where all the screens are. But I'd been there in the past, and there's a back entrance. 
like there's a ramp at the back that you go through and then you can get to the, the first floor. So I, I knew I was going to use that. So my dad's gone up to buy the ticket with my cinema card. Uh, like, that It's like proof of disability, basically. It's a card that says I get, you know, you d- I don't pay for the cinema. My ticket is free. That's what it means. So my dad's taken that. He's take, taken his uh, money, however much it was. And he's like gone up there and paid for the tickets, bought them. So they they know I'm like one of the tickets is disabled, obviously. They know that, but they haven't told us which screen it like. Well, we we can see what number the screen is, but they haven't wor- realized that that screen is not accessible. Like there's no ramp, like there's stairs to get in. So we get there and we've we've got up to the first floor, and they're like, okay, you have to go through this screen, like it's the biggest screen there, one of the IMAX screens, to get to a door. So we have to unlock to get you into your screen. Um, so then we're waiting in the cinema. Bumblebee's on in the cinema. Funny enough, in that particular theatre. So we're waiting for this girl to get the key. She comes back. She goes, look, I'm sorry. Uh, there's four steps going down. Can you walk? Can you get down the stairs to get in? I was like, obviously not. You know, well, she didn't say it like in, in a rude way. But like, if you know what I mean, can you get out of the chair? Can you get down the stairs? I was like, no. She's like, uh, sorry. We're going to have to refund you. I was like, what? Come on. What are you on? Oh, sorry, we didn't... You didn't re- what do you mean you didn't realise? At this point, we just... We just can't be bothered to argue. We just want to see the film. You know, it's a bit annoying, so we got a refund. And we checked the Odeon. Like, literally opposite. Uh, they got the same film, like, half an hour later, 15 minutes later. So we go to the Odeon instead. Uh, and that was just not... I mean... Cineworld, like, what are you doing? I think that's the only cinema world that isn't that accessible. But I mean, had the film been in the other screen where Bumblebee was on, it would have been fine. But it was in the one room we couldn't get into. Because the last time I was there, I was on the second floor at one of the other screens. And it was fine. You just take the lift to go up. And everything's flat, you know. Anyway, we were fed up. So we just went to the Odeon. Luckily, the same film was on. So much better service in general. The Odeon are probably known for that more than other cinemas. You know, I used to go to View Cinema down the road. They're just depressed teenagers serving you. <laughs> Most of them, anyway. At least at the Odeon, they're a bit more polite, you know. They actually smile for once. Um, so, yeah, we've gone into the cinema. What's the film, basically? Uh, the Odeon, not the cine world. Uh, big difference in customer service. Even the cinema chairs, they're, like, reclinable and all that. Not that it matters to me. I've got this wonderful chair anyway. But so, what a film that was. It's just... Just a, a great way to just chill and watch a film. Like, no hurry to go anywhere, you know, just there. And then the guy at the end of the Odeon has just said, you know, let us know if you want to come back again. Uh, do fill out this form if you want to talk about our, you know, our accessibility and all that. What you thought. And I'm thinking, right, the Sydney world... If they asked me that, I would have said a lot of things. And not nice things, you know. So it's just good to be treated nice. Cine world. I'm never going there again, honestly. But there you go. But I hadn't been to an Odeon in years, really. So that made up for that Sunday that was a bit depressing. Annoying. But let's get into the story and really why I was in... Not in that state, but yeah, you know, I'm not going to exaggerate. But I wasn't in my best <laughs> mindset. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, like medical things that I have, that like things that help me medically. You know, I, I use it's called a BiPAP. It's like it enables you to breathe at night correctly. Like so, imagine the lung is imagine your lungs are like an inflatable balloon, right? So with me, because of the nature of the condition, that the lungs don't fill up entirely with air, and then yeah, you breathe in and out, so they fill up and then deflate. You no, know? so. Imagine that like a balloon, right? Mine don't fill up all the way. So this machine at night, it's the mask I wear, and it enable, like, imagine Bane basically, or Darth Vader, you know, I don't know that kind of thing. If you put, put, it's not oxygen; it's just air. So it helps your lungs expand. What's the other word? Anyway, when you breathe in and out, it helps your lungs do that to the full capacity. Basically, it's a machine I use. I'm supposed to use it every night, according to these doctors, but. Last time I was there in October, I mentioned to them that I was getting really bad bruises on my nose, and you probably noticed that from the vlog. I never talk about this thing because it's like 
it's a long process, basically. A lot to explain, anyway. So, I was wearing this mask for the last three months. And getting really bad bruising on my nose. Scarring, even. And so, I did, they, you know, I asked them. I said, what do you want me to do? You know, it's really annoying. It's painful, you know. It's like, okay, don't wear it. Um, try these plasters. Um, but obviously, they sent me the wrong ones. But I used to have these thicker plasters that... Not pl- it's like tape you put on your nose to protect it from the pressure of this mask. Um, but that didn't work. That wasn't working. And this went on for a while. And, of course, you know, in October I had all those stomach issues. I didn't feel too well at all, did I? Half the time. Um, so I was recovering from that. And there was a lot, you know, reasons why I didn't use it. So th- th- this doctor is like the the one that covers the, like all the respiratory stuff, the lungs. So this, you know, she checked all the data on this equipment. That she's they've seen that I've not used it enough. And I, you know, she's like, what's, you know, what's the reason? You know, why haven't you? You really should have been using it. This and that. And I'm like, look, I've been ill. I haven't been able to use it. And I, I didn't, you know, I said. Also, I thought that the issues with my stomach would be worsened by this machine. Like, would make me bloated or something. Which, with, with the collapsed colon I had, wouldn't have been ideal to add to, to the stomach problems. So, And I thought that as well. And they're like, well, it's not that. It, it can't be that. And I was, I was like, well, what about all the bruising on my nose? You know, I couldn't wear it with that. Like, okay, we're going to give you this new mask and this plaster, right? Or tape for my nose, whatever. But it was like the way she said it, you know, she was like, oh, yeah, you should wear it because once there was this kid who was in intensive care, he went to, into intensive care because he didn't use this mask every night, this machine. Um, and it affected his breathing, blah, blah, blah. I was like, look, are you trying to scare me? Don't don't be trying to scare me because I'm not trying to rebel against anyone. I'm just trying. I was angry when I said this. You know, I, I wouldn't not wear it deliberately. I'm not trying to rebel against anyone. I've got a good reason why I didn't wear it. You know, and if I was well enough... I would have worn it every night, you know. Of course, I never, you know, it's never been a hundred percent that I've worn it since I've had it a few years now. And in her eyes, I should be using it every night, and I know that. But uh, you know, circumstance and being ill, so I had a good reason, you know, a good reason. So I was like really annoyed by that. It doesn't seem like it, but <laughs> yeah. So one of the old doctors was like, "Don't worry about her. She's a bit mad. You know, you're doing fine. You're doing great." But this negativity just... So that was the day with Lauren Hardy. Then the next day, it's the last day. Is it the last day? Yeah, and I can't remember anyway. It's all a blur. She's back again. Like, this is the head... Like, she's a consultant with the respiratory stuff. And so I can hear her down the corridor. I'm in the room at the end. I can hear her talking to the other patients. And my room had... Luckily, they're giving me my own room. Had the door. And I can hear her voice. and just fed up. I just slammed the door, literally. don't know if you heard it or not, but I slammed the door. And I was like... She took ages to get to me because I'm right at the end. Maybe deliberately, I don't know. I was a bit peeved off. You know, because I want to get ready, go home and leave. You know, I want to leave. Because once she talks to me, I can go. So she she started the conversation this day. You know, obviously they come in, I'm like, hello, how are you? I was putting on the smile and all that. You know, out of respect for the other doctors. Because um, they actually are polite. And, maybe, and they deserve politeness, you know. But this one, like, yeah, she's trying to do a, do a job, but, like, don't, you know, all the other doctors and nurses are, like, intimidated. But, but I'm not scared of you, you know I mean? You're short, whatever. Oh, no. Where are you from? Anyway, anyway yeah, I'm not going to go into who it was. Um, But, yeah. So she's coming, she's like, so this problem of you not using the mask every night, I was like, it's not a problem, because I'm going to go home and I'm going to use it every night because I'm well. I've got no reason not to. You know, I said it firmly as well. I didn't get so angry this day, but I was already annoyed from the day before. You know, and then at one point she's like, well, sleep study is like, the results of the sleep study, they were saying like, because it monitors everything in your body. She's like, it wasn't perfect. And then my dad said to her, well, what's perfect then? Can we get to perfect? She's like, I can't promise you that. But I'm I'm thinking like, what is what are you comparing me to then? If you're comparing me to an able-bodied person, well, obviously I'm not perfect. I'm never going to get to that, am I? You know, what are we talking about here? What are you comparing me to? Is there some other person with my condition that's, that's, you know, some model version of me? I don't know. Some version that they got written in a book. This is how they'll be at this age. I mean, no. 
I mean, I'm not. I mean, the other doctor said to me that like she's just doing that, to, you know, cruel to be kind, like to to make you realise. And I'm like, and she was saying like this other doctor, that's more, the more friendly one, was saying like, well, she's used to these 16, 17 year olds that come here with your condition who, you know, think they're really tough and they don't need this and that, and they they don't quite get it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm 25. I'm not rebelling against anyone, you know. But and the, 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 this other doctor was saying like, look, I know you. I know your family. You know, I know, you know. She doesn't maybe know you so well. She doesn't know that when you know, doesn't know me that when I say something, I mean it. And I'm not. I'm not a bad. I'm not rebellious in any. Well, I am, but not when it comes to my health. Like, why would I self sabotage my own life? It's difficult enough, you know. <laughs> Not going to make it more difficult. I don't know why I had to explain it. Well, so I was really annoyed. Just the way the way it went down, because like, where's the where's the etiquette? She's really short as well. Like, so <laughs> that was it. I thought she was Scottish, but she's actually Irish. So I'm like, we're like, you're Scottish, right? So no, 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 I'm Irish. Well, <laughs> um, you know, are you offended? Because I was before. With whatever you said to me, anyway, she was like, "Well, you got to use it now, you know." And I, you know, I said one thing. I was like, "Oh, my, my nose is still red after having used this machine last night." She's like, "Well, it's going to take time." Blah blah blah. All right, don't kill me with the book, Jesus. Just say what you got to say, but be polite. You know, she was trying to scare. She's like, "I'm not trying to scare you. You clearly were, but it don't work on me." You know what I mean? I'm the only one that stood up to her there. All the doctors and nurses are scared of her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what my brother said, he's like, I, well, I'm going to condemn that building for ignorant staff or something, <laughs> something like that. And then they're going to close it down, you know, or complain to HR, what the hell. Take it above, take it to the bosses, man. I mean, the amount of people, cousins of mine I was talking to about this at the time, I was like, I'm really annoyed, guys. <laughs> it's quite funny. Like, I don't get it, but, you know, you know I'm not going to not be honest with these people. And I said to her, I'm going to go home, I'm going to use it every day. And I'm trying, I'm trying to. It's not easy, especially when you go out of a night like I do, you know. My dad did back me up with that, saying, like, you know, he goes out, comes back 2, 3 a.m. sometimes. Him and his brother, his brother puts him to bed, you know, this and that. She's like, I don't care. You have to use it all the time. Even a few hours at night, you know, you have to use this machine. And this is something I never talked about on the vlog. Or point. And I'll be honest, for a long time it was like, I didn't want to mention it. Like, because... If you see it, it's like freaky to see. It. It's like it's like this tube and it's connected to this mask, and you know it's a thing I wear at night. And a lot of people do with my condition. A lot of everybody people with like sleep apnea and stuff do use it too, so it's not uncommon. But it's just an alien thing on my face, basically. Uh, you know, I I use a wheelchair, so it's not something that really bothers me. But I was like, I don't want to worry people with using it, thinking like because it looks pretty serious, like intense. When you, if you're using it, and a lot of times I didn't, and I'll be honest, like I probably should have, but now I will, you know, I f forget all the vainness, and as long as it's not bruising my face, you know, I just hope not, because you want me to wear it, but I could have worn it every night and, bru and cut my nose open, broken my nose, broken skin is not good on your nose, because it can lead to infection, and your nose is like near your brain, so, you don't want that, that's what one of them said, but yeah, it's just her that annoyed me, so, but I did, you know, I was polite at the end. I said, thank you, see you next time, blah, blah, blah. He's like, we want you back in three months. Whoa, three months. I just was here three months ago. I'm back, you want me back in April, okay. But uh, we're going to work it out probably May. But I just I hate hospitals. Yeah, they're all doing a good job, but NHS. I mean, I realise how messed up it is because this mask they give me now is a temporary one. So I've got extra foam and like sponge on the end. The bit that touches your face has sponge on it, right? And this is like you have to throw it away after a few months because it gets dirty. So they were like, they only gave me one of these, and they're like, once you're done with this, you have to go back to your old mask and alternate between your old mask and this other mask we're going to give you that should be better, that doesn't put the pressure on your nose. Because it's a mask that goes like over my mouth and nose. I like imagine, you know, Bane basically. That's what I'm saying. Imagine Bane. It's pretty cool in some way, but. Yeah, so that's what I use. And that's what they said. So I was like, okay, three months. Alright, yeah, whatever. See you next year, you know what I mean? 
because they're, they're kind of monitoring me even more. But that's natural anyway, because it, it's a progressive condition. But come on, you know, lighten up. Isn't it better as a doctor to, if you care about the patient, aren't their feelings part of their well-being? So don't hurt their feelings, don't piss them off, because you piss me off. You know, don't, you know, they don't consider, you didn't consider that. If you're a doctor, you're going to consider the whole thing. Not just your area of expertise, you're supposed to know a bit about everything, you know. You not just look in a book and find the answer. But half of them do. So that was a bit annoying, so anyway. They only gave me one of these masks, so I'm like, you know, well, give me another one. So like, oh, we don't give these out normally. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's the money right there, that's the NHS. Not giving it out because of money. Whatever it is, I'm not going to get political... Brexit or no Brexit, whatever. That's a that's a ongoing argument and discussion in the politics every day at the moment. But the NHS, as good as it is, needs to be better, to be honest. Um, I don't know if that means... I'm not talking about this doctor, I'm talking about like the mean, them not giving me another mask. I mean, had I had this before, I wouldn't have had the problem in the first place, and I would have worn it every day. I'm not ill, I feel fine. But they're thinking about the future. I feel fine, you know, there's nothing affecting me at the moment, so yeah, this machine's going to help everything. So I wear it all the time, I mean, it's not she thought like I wasn't as struggling to get used to it, but I had a good reason in the past, maybe didn't care as much as I should have, but now, okay if they're saying that, fine, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to see her face when I've used it every single day this podcast is just getting me, have me ranting and raving in it but yeah, I'm just going to use it every single day I go, was that enough? You know? And then when they ask when you're coming back next, I say, do you want me here next week? I might as well stay here. Jesus. But it was all good. I've gained two kilos, guys. So all those milkshakes and extra food I've been eating has been helping. I was worried that I hadn't, but I have. So the dietitian, she's like, we'll just keep doing the same. You don't need me to tell you anything. And I had a good old laugh with the dietitian, like, for once, <laughs> with a doctor. After the one I'd seen before that, you know. So it was all good. Gained two kilos. Well happy with that. I'm still too light. I'm still too light. Like 35 kilos. Nah. I still don't believe I'm that light. But I have been 47 kilos in the past. Before 2010. When I was like one of them fat kids. <laughs> no, it was, like, it was like, you know, when you got your baby fat still. Before I had the spinal operation. In 2010. Where I lost a lot of weight during that but you got to think about it like over the summer I was quite ill with the stomach it started like before the summer and it got worse and it was towards September time when it was really bad if you remember before I was in A&E for like 12 hours and then the same the following week with the colonoscopy let's not go into that but yeah they didn't didn't even get that I've been through all that you know I think about before when I in October when I was there last it was a few weeks after my grandma passed away so it was like a really, in, like, in terms of eating, no one was eating right. We were getting takeaways. It just, you know, no one felt right. So obviously it probably could have caused that. Could have been a good reason that led to it all. But remember last time I said the medication, the laxative they gave me caused it. And the doctor at Barnet said that. After my colonoscopy, they said, look, don't take this medicine ever. So I haven't. I take milk and magnesia instead, which helps you digest and in turn, go to the bathroom. Um, so, yeah. The process of the intestine, like, it's still messed up for me. Like, I don't digest near as quick as anyone else. And this, you know, so this is just annoying. But, so to have gained the weight was really amazing. Credit to me. I said that to them, you know. To have done that was impossible. Could have been impossible. To have to eat less anyway. Like, in one go. Like, little and often. But to still have to gain weight. I I don't know how I did it. (laughs) I'm proud, you know. This whole year, probably after I got back from Italy, all the bad stuff happened. To my grandma and me getting ill, it happened then. All the bad stuff, really. The most of 2018. The bad stuff. And I made it, there was, you know, once I got through it, I was like, am I through it? Is this it? I can't believe it. Can I actually get back to my YouTube and to my life? I did miss a bit of YouTube. Um, But here we are, well again. I'm going to keep well and I'm going to listen to these doctors. Even if they get on my nerves. 
you know, whatever you're going through, if you've been with doctors, you know, they're sometimes cold-hearted and treat you like a number because they have to, because if they cared about everyone really closely, then someone got ill because then they, they wouldn't be able to deal with it. Or in more serious situations, you know, with like operations and stuff, they have to take responsibility. But if they get too fond of one person, then they can't do their job properly. They can't have favoritism. I realise this now, and I know that I'm going to have to see this woman every time I go there. Um, she's just got short person syndrome, I think. Like, as in, she's really annoyed that everyone else is taller than her. And I think some of these doctors are just a bit weird. Like teachers, no offence. Some of them, some of them, don't get offended now. Some of them can be weird and, like, in their own clique. And, like, just strange... Well, with doctors and nurses, they can be, like, nocturnal, but some of them just, I don't know, maybe she's got such a boring life that she's jealous that I'm a YouTuber. Probably not, but <laughs> just exaggerate. I'm just trying to say things. It's tr just trying to ease the the stress of, this situ of the situation. Well, I'm fine now, but at the time, well, <laughs> my dad was like, just can't just chill out, you know? Don't worry, you know? They're just doing their job, and he's right. And the more I look at this screen, I was thinking I look like a Star Wars character. And, yeah, I've got to use the force with these people, man. <laughs> but, yeah, I get on with most of the nurses pretty well. Uh, they've got a mix of male and female, different... Everyone's... Everyone's... Uh, a lot of different cultures there, which is good to see. That's why I love London in some ways. You love it for that. And, oh, yeah, another story from when I was there. I did kind of get an argument with a homeless person. Basically, me and my dad were talking about which, where the Sainsbury's in that area. There's a Brunswick Centre, which is near there, where the Sainsbury's was, as we came out the Tesco, because the Tesco was a bit packed. So we thought, let's go somewhere else to buy water and stuff, and whatever we need for that evening. Um, so there's a homeless person outside this Tesco. to come out, and she's, like, interrupted us as we're talking. Like, already on the way, and she's asking for money and, like, all this. In a polite way, don't get me wrong. But so we come out and I'm like, she's like, oh, there's a there's a Sainsbury's there, there's a Waitrose there. I'm like, and she's like over here on my right, like sitting down. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And she's like, as I'm walking, I'm driving away. She's like, oh, no, all right, no need to be rude. I'm like, hold on. I'm, I thought I better not go back. <laughs> what am I going to get in a fight over this? I was like, hold on, what do you mean be rude? I said, thank you very much. Unless you mistaken thank you for the F, you know, the F word. I said, F you. I think she meant, she thought I meant. But no, I was saying thank you very much. Or maybe the fact that she thought she was, maybe she was still speaking and interrupted her mid-sentence. But the next day my dad saw her outside the same Tesco arguing with someone else, like proper shouting at someone. So yeah, I didn't really get in an argument with a homeless person. It's just, it was just quite a funny situation. I've never been in that situation before. And when you see homeless people, it's like the same. I mentioned it before, like, why only Christmas? People are nice to them. If that. I mean, I don't give them money because it's just effort for me to go in my pocket, you know, ask someone out, ask my dad whoever's with me to do it, you know what I mean? Because I, you know. And to be honest, when you're in public, like, whipping your wallet out and stuff is a bit, like, someone's going to see you do that and they'll see where you put it back and I'm no idiot, you know. If, if certain people are going to target that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially when there's a lot of people around, like, touristy areas, you know. I've known, for the amount of holidays I've been on in big cities like Barcelona, you got to keep your wits about you. <laughs> Wait, that's a Harry Potter line, isn't it? Got to keep your wits about you. <laughs> Filch, you know, they killed his cat. Is his cat called, I don't know. Yeah, Filch or whatever, and he had the cat called Norris. And he was telling Harry Potter, you better keep your wits about you. Anyway, if you know that reference, you <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm not going to do the accent. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, argument with a homeless person, argument with a doctor. Big difference, well, yeah. It was just proper banter the whole time. And meeting that cab driver cheered me up as well. Bearing in mind, on the way back from Leicester Square, the next cab driver, he, well, the first one we got, he didn't have the key to open the ramp on his cab, so then we hailed another cab, but it was... A, and then Mercedes ones. She's like, it's still a van, but the roof is a bit lower. 
And so I literally almost smashed my head. So I had to recline with my chair as I'm driving in. We got in and there's another good old cab driver saying about how this time of year has been dead, like for, for business. Like no money in it at this time of year. Because it's like there's not many people around. So yeah, banter with him. Bit of a chat, but no free ride. No free lift. Eight quid, eight quid fifty or something. It's been, it was, I don't know. They always take the longer route, but I think, I don't know, if I'm not mistaken in the past, we've paid a tenner for that. Or something. But anyway, on the way there, it was free. We just literally bought the guy a cup of coffee and that was it. But on the way back, yeah. But still, good chat with another cab driver. And I never thought it was that easy to get a cab for me. A black cab. You know, I've got in them in the past and I haven't in the past. Uh, normally, we take take our van down. So it's a bit different. You take a van, you've got to park and stay there. But we did have the car the whole time. But if we'd moved it, we'd have risked losing our space. And it's where we had to keep the car overnight. Which most people do. In that situation. But So I'm just, I was just glad to be out of there. Just so relieved to be home. Um, like I said, I don't like hospitals. Hate is a strong word. But I'll use it. I hate hospitals. But I had to be there. I don't tell them that. Because that's just... That's where they work. Come on. But yeah, um, they're all quite fond of me there. I'm nice to most people, unless they're nasty to me. Or well, most people are like that anyway. I don't know why you'd be nice to someone that's nasty to you. You know, unless you're trying to kill them with kindness. I kind of did that, and well, she wasn't being nasty, but I I gotta be have some sort of etiquette myself. Be polite, you know. Otherwise, you're just as bad as whoever it is. Uh, but yeah, don't. Don't argue with doctor. I don't think it was really an argument. But I was red faced and angry at the time. She was a bit taken back. I don't know. She was ready to fight, literally. Fight for his shoes, you know what I mean? Bloody hell. <laughs> Shortest one as well. But yeah, so we were out of there. Came, was that? Yeah. Tuesday? No, Monday? I don't know. I get mixed up with my days. But yeah, so we got back and it was just a relief. I just chilled out, really. Trying to get used to the routine again. Um, so that was the trip. I haven't many times I've said that. But I want to move on to another subject now. And guys, I'm starting to make music. I'm going to be making music. Um, DJ21, Louisa21. I haven't thought of a good name yet. But that's a long way off. The name is a long way off. What it's actually going to be. At the moment, I'm using... Is it? music maker it's not fruit loop but it's on that level but i might have to get fruit loop or something similar something easy enough to use with enough different sounds and beats on it but yeah i'm making a song and it's not going to be the usual three minute four minute song i'm trying to go for a longer piece of music like you know like those mi- music mixes you get on youtube they're like 20 minutes long and they're like it pretty much instrumental with a few vocals here and there like the ones that help you relax and stuff and can put on in the background that kind of music. I wanna do I'm trying to make that. But it's coming out a bit more like EDM, this bit of music. Or house, kind of. Um, but it's like a demo version of the app I'm using. So there's not many sounds I have an access to. But I wanna make this tune, I wanna use it in my vlog, because I keep getting copyright striked for using other people's music. Some not all the time if it's copyright free. But so I wanna make my own music and use it for that. And I'll be uploading it on one of my platforms. <laughs> Probably all of them, actually. YouTube, definitely SoundCloud, iTunes. Yeah, SoundCloud is a great place for music. But as it's 20 minutes, it'll be like... For YouTube, it'll be better just put it on and listen to it in the background. But I might shorten it, make a shorter version. Like half the song, quarter of the song. Just for SoundCloud. But practice makes perfect. The more you do, the better you'll be. Not, It's not, you know... It's quantity as opposed to quality because you're never going to make the best piece of music every time. You're going to make loads and one of them eventually will be up there. So this is my first piece of music. Um, I've been inspired probably by my cousin. She wants to be a rapper, so I'm not going to rap. I can't sing. Um, So it's just DJing. It's kind of a DJ kind of thing. I've got a good mate of mine who does DJing, like at parties and stuff. But that's different to what I'm saying. I'm saying like 
DJ is in, you know, not comparing myself, but, you know, like Calvin Harris, for example, he don't sing really. He, he makes all the sounds for the songs, that kind of thing. Or Marshmallow. Marshmallow, what a legend. Um, yeah, I'm not going to start wearing a mask or anything. I might, well, <laughs> wear one at night anyway, for a different reason, but yeah. Some sort of mask, like Marshmallow does. I might do that, but anyway, it's that type of theme. But the music, I want it to be quite chill. I mean, there's a guy on YouTube, I use a lot of his music in my vlogs. It doesn't seem to be copyrighted at the moment. Uh, Jaden Camstra, I think his name is. He's like 20 or 19 or 20. And he makes all these beats. These kind of chill tr- tunes, if you like. Chops bits from other songs together. Not other songs, but like... Anyway, it's quite original the way he does it. But, you know, he doesn't sing or anything. He just adds all these beats together. Vocals here and there from other other things. And they they're really... They're good for, like, say, a bit, say I'm busy editing, I'll put them on in the background. And I always do when I'm here editing, because it's pretty much all I do. <laughs> um, it's the life of YouTuber, guys. Um, but yeah, so I do that, and then I put on in the background. And he really inspired me, I don't know why. So an interview with him and how easy it is. Not, is. I'm not in, attracted to it because it's easy. I'm attracted to it because music, you know, you can resonate with music a lot. Videos in one way, but music is different. It's like a whole nother level or different kind of feeling from music you get. Like really, it's like a picture into your soul in some ways. But um, yeah, it's not going to be good. <laughs> I, might, I think it's not bad. I mean, I would, li- well, it's, it's sounding a bit like Clean Bandit as well at some point. On some levels. <laughs> don't know what level I'm talking about. But yeah, music will be coming soon. You may hear it in the vlog first, in the background. But I'm excited to to talk to mention that. Can't wait, you know. I haven't even let my cousin hear the song yet. This is gonna be sick. But yeah, watch this space. Episode seven, guys. So many good and bad things in this episode. Um from the the cab driver, that's just a that's just made my week. I that story, I will remember that forever. But yeah, and arguing with a doctor. I want to see if any of my friends that go there as well at football if they've had the same experience with her, or not, or like what they think, because they probably know. She probably knows everyone, sees every. I guess they see the same everyone there. Unless there's another doctor that does her job. I hope. Get okay, her fired for Christ's sake. Phone them up. Look, this doctor was rude to me. She offended me. No. Get get her out of this place now. You know, because I, I, I'm in charge. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my TV's just acting weird. It's making a noise. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know how long this podcast has been so far, but that's about the end of it, I would I would have thought. Um, yeah. I will see you guys on the next episode. Unless I think of anything really quickly to say. No. (laughs) Yeah, guys. So, I'm Louise21. And, like I always say, be yourself. Be real, you know. Do what you do. As long as you're not doing nothing. As long as you're making the world a better place in some way. Maybe it doesn't feel like it. And maybe no one thinks you are. And people are criticising you. And people are dragging you down. But just forget all that shit. Just do what you're doing and if it's if it's right or wrong you will know in time um you're never going to know something's the right thing for you or not you know like me with youtube i never never knew if it would be and maybe vlogging isn't maybe it is maybe podcasting is the thing i'll be doing 10 years from now maybe making music but you know whatever it is i know i've worked hard to get there and whatever you are doing Whatever area you're in, just work at that. Don't put your fingers in too many pies. Yeah, I'm podcasting, I'm vlogging, I'm making music, but it's all content. It's all content I'm creating. And if anything, it's documenting my life. Like, it's all out there for the world to see. For years, for generations. Leave your mark, guys. Leave your mark in some way. (laughs) Just not in someone's forehead. 
what I could have done with that doctor. What a shin, really. I could have run her over. But violence is not not the way for a young Jedi. Remember, use the Force. The Force is strong. The Force is with it. I don't know. I don't know enough Star Wars and memes or whatever. Anyway, thank you guys. Don't go too far. Don't stray too far away from the channel. Do come back. See you on the next video, vlog, podcast. Enjoy my music when it comes out. I don't know when. I better set a date for that. Not right now, but I will set a date. <laughs> I can't wait, guys. The future is bright. And I'm going to have to end this vlog. It's not a vlog, it's a podcast. Guys, how many times have I said that? It's episode 7. This is me, Louise21. Your host, Gianluca Louise. Follow me on Instagram. Louise21 official. SoundCloud, Gianluca28. I'm on iTunes as well. The podcast is. More of these podcasts if you want to hear more of them. If you've been watching, thank you for watching. If you're listening on SoundCloud, thank you. If you've been listening on iTunes, thank you, thank you. I love you all. You're great fans. All 76 billion of you. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if I had 76 billion. No one does. Not even PewDiePie. It's got 76 million. I, I, I would, I would, you know. Someone offered me a million now. A million subscribers. I would take it. But none of them would be as loyal as the first 76. You guys. 21 fam for life. 21 forever. Peace. Take it easy. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your month, enjoy your year. I'll see you very soon. It's your man, 21. Louise 21, your boy, is out for another podcast. See you on episode 8. Who's coming up the street? And you're beginning to feel the heat. Well, listen, sister, you better start to move your feet to the rockin' You know what I'm saying?